It's not uncommon to be using third-party tools in Unity and not have access to the source code, which means you can't add attributes to shape the inspectors and make full use of Odin. Or does it? So it turns out, even if you don't have access to the source code, you can still modify the inspector using Odin. You just need to use a custom attribute processor. Now there are more advanced topic, but this video is going to take a look at the basics of how to create them and how to use them. An attribute processor can change the attributes that Odin processes, how they're processed, and even add attributes to a property or a class. Attribute processors can be written to work with specific classes, or they can also be written to work with any class that inherits from a specific type. When you create a new attribute processor, Odin will automatically add it and use it. It's as simple as creating the script and saving it into your project. So let's imagine that you have a character script that looks something like this in the inspector. It would look a whole lot better and potentially be easier to use if you could add some Odin attributes. But let's also imagine that you either can't access the code directly or maybe you don't want to add the attributes to the class file itself. To fix up the inspector, we can create custom attribute processors for the character class. To do this, we need to create a new c -sharp script and in this case, I'll call mine character attribute processor. Once the script is open, we need to add several namespaces. Serenix.odinspector, serenix.odinspector.editor, serenix.utilities, system, and system.reflection. We then need to change what the class inherits from to Odin attribute processor. As is, this attribute processor will be applied to all inspectors drawn by Odin, which does not include Unity built-in types such as Transform or Rigidbody. This may be useful in some cases, but in general, reducing the scope of an attribute processor to a single class or a family of classes is going to be the most common use. To restrict the processor to a single class, we can add a generic parameter at the end of the class definition with a target class inside, like so. However, if the attribute processor should also be used on classes that inherit from a particular class, we can add a generic type of parameter after the class name and after Odin attribute processor, like so. We can then restrict T to classes that inherit from the character or another class by adding the keyword where, followed by T, a semicolon, and finally the type. With the class created, we need to override the function process child member attributes. This will allow us to add or modify attributes on the members in the character class. This function has three input parameters. The first is of type inspector property, and this gives us access to the parent property, which in my case will be the character class itself. The second is of type member info and gives access to individual members. Odin will loop through and call this function for each member in the class. This will allow filtering based on member properties. The last parameter is a list of all the attributes on an individual member. This is a regular list that can be cleared, reordered, or added to. Inside the function, the first thing we can do is shrink the label width in the class. This can be done by adding an attribute to the attributes list. We can do this with attributes.add and then parentheses with new label width attribute and an input parameter of 110. Notice that we are using the full class name for the attribute, which generally ends with the word attribute, as opposed to when we simply add an attribute to a field in a script. If we now let Unity compile, we can see that this attribute has been added to every member in the character class. Next, we can start adding attributes for individual members. We can easily do this by type or by name. This is done with a simple if statement that compares the member's name to a string. In this case, we're looking for a member name of icon. Inside the if statement, we can add as many attributes as needed. In my case, I'll hide the label, add the field to a group, and apply the preview field attribute, like so. We can then add the prefab field to a vertical group, once again by comparing the member name to a string. Then inside the if statement, add a vertical group attribute to the attributes list. In this case, I've chosen to make the vertical group a child or a subgroup of the previously defined horizontal group. The character class has string fields for the character name and the description. 
Rather than creating if statements for both those fields independently, we can check the member's type by calling getReturnType on the member and comparing that value to the type of string. If the member is of the correct type, then we can add the member to the same vertical group as the prefab field. Once again letting Unity compile, we can see the results in the inspector. Now you may notice that the icon field is on the right hand side of the inspector. If we want to move it to a more traditional place on the left, we can add a property order attribute, like so, to force that field to be drawn first and thus on the left side of the horizontal group. Overall, the inspector is looking better, but the stats field could still use some improvements. Stats is its own class, so we can create a second attribute processor to work specifically with a stats class. For the sake of simplicity of the video, I'll do this in the same file as the character attribute processor, but of course you could move this off into its own c -sharp script. I'll call the new class stats attribute processor. Once again, it'll inherit from the Odin attribute processor, and I'll add the target type at the end in angle brackets, which is in this case is stats. Inside the class, we once again need to override the function process child member attributes. Since the class only contains stats and they're all integers, I'll add a box group attribute to all members of the class as well as a range attribute, like so. Once again letting Unity compile, we can see the results. To finish off our custom attribute processor, there's one more function that can be used to add attributes. If we override the function process self attributes, we can add attributes to the class itself. For example, we can hide the label and add a space above the stats field, like so. Custom attribute processors are particularly powerful if you can't access third party code or you don't want to add attributes to the original code. If you want to learn more about attribute processors, there are written examples on the Odin Inspector website, as well as more detailed information about important types such as Inspector property. The member info class is defined in system.reflection and more information can be found in c -sharp resources. You can find links to these resources in the video description below. So we hope that was interesting and useful in your projects. If you have questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below or come on over to the DevDog Discord. And until next time, happy game designing.